our plans. We're going to go ahead and get started. <laughs> um, we wanted to give a couple extra minutes in case people have a hard time getting in because of the room closures. So, um, before we fully begin, I want to let you guys know that are in the room that those when those green lights are on, the mics are live. So whatever you're saying will hopefully get picked up um, by the Zoom meeting so that if you ask a question, everybody can hear it. We do have a few. Um, and then this is being recorded. Everyone's aware on Zoom and here in person that there is going to be a recording of this. Um, hopefully, we'll get posted onto our website later. Just everything. Hello. Welcome and thank you for coming to our special events and forum. All of you are being here. And um, thank you to those of you who are joining us on Zoom. Um, so we wanted to hold this in-person meeting. Um, we've got some changes that are coming to our program. Um, changes we have highlighted here. So we are gonna be having a few new permit types that are gonna become available. Um, the big one that we're really excited about is the annual itinerant permit. Um, and we'll go into more detail on that in a minute. Um, we're also going to be going to online applications, and our inspections will be all done electronically instead of getting those little slips of paper. Um, we'll fill it out similar to how we do a restaurant inspection, and then you'll just get the inspection email to you. Um, and then we're going to just briefly touch on in expectations during inspections. Um, expectations going both ways, both for the guys in the field and um, So as Kristen mentioned, um, we're really excited about this one because we've been asked about it in the past couple of years and so to announce our annual itinerant permit. Um, so who is this type for? And it's our temporary food vendors that attend multiple multiple events throughout the year with the same menu and the same operation each time. Um, requirements for, the, um, for this year since it goes live July 1st. It's not a full calendar year. Um, it's five or more events that you're participating in um, for the special year. And then moving to the full calendar year, um, you have to uh, list eight events qualify for this permit. Um, and then you must have a designated servicing area. And before we issue this permit, we will conduct an inspection at this location. Um, and then Instead of like the jug of water and bucket that we allow for temporary events, um, we'll have to have self-contained. Um, and then all equipment has to be commercial. Um, so it means like coolers and ice, except for stuff that is not perishable, so, uh, canned or bottled. And then the expectations after you obtain this. Um, we expect the operator to be in like, constant communication with us about which is um, otherwise we have no way to um, And we do expect compliance with all the regulations. Um, failure to do either of these could result in revocation, which means the rest of <laughs> Just a fair warning. Um, and then the fees are up there for what the permit costs for the year. High risk operations is one thousand four hundred one. Is one thousand. The second type of permit we have is the special event organizer permit. So this permit is meant for like smaller multiple day events um, that have five or more temp food vendors, um, and it's based on boot. Rather than attendance, how it's 
Um, attendance was pretty burdensome for the like event organizer to track and for us. I'm an event organizer. Yeah, if you're not organizing yeah. event, this just see. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are slowly starting to phase out our paper applications. We're moving to an all online application system. Um, you can now create fill out your application and pay for the permit fee all online through One Nevada. You have to create an account for One Nevada before you're able to do that. The QR code on the next slide, if you guys want to scan it and save it, just so you have the website. Um, and then we are also moving to a, an electronic system for our inspections as well. So we'll be using iPads in the fields now. You will no longer get paper applications or paper uh, inspection reports. So this is going to take a little bit of time for our inspectors to get used to. So just please give some grace to them as they're learning the iPads. It might take a little bit longer for them to do your inspection than it has previously. But we'll get it. We'll, we'll get faster in here. Um, additionally, you will also be receiving a paper permit via email once you've been approved. That's something that we haven't done in the past. Now you'll get something via email once you're approved. Um, and keeping or keeping an eye on your emails as well really important because that's where most of our communications are now going to come from. Can I ask a question? If you're saying that you're going to do it electronically, why are you not giving the permit by email? It's a paper permit that's going to be sent to you via email. So it's like oh, a PDF. Okay. So you can either print it or you can just have it on your phone if you want to. Like A lot of times we've had requests that even though we've kind of considered you guys approved, you don't have anything from us that shows how you'd actually have a permit to operate. Okay, so will that permit be displayed at your location site like it used to be? Because initially, um, when it was paper, you guys kept one color and we took the permit and then we put it as well and then we had um, a safe set in addition to that. But since you guys stopped giving those things, none of us posted anything to indicate that. So we wanted to bring that back. So now it's going to electronically come to you. Yeah. It'll come to you before and you can post it. Yeah. Or like Amber said, if you want to just have it on your phone. It's not a requirement. I think it's not a requirement that you physically put oh, okay. it. It's not yeah. if anyone were to ask you or if you wanted to be able to demonstrate that you're. Okay. All right. Um, and then here is the QR code for the tutorial on how to make your account with ATA, Stella Citizen Access on OneNevada.us. <laughs> video too that the QR code goes to will also be on the website. Oh. Um, and then a couple quick reminders for operating at events um, under a temporary food establishment. Um, and this is covered in the commonly seen violations document that should have gone out in the email and that's printed in hard copy that you have. Um, just want to remind you guys to make sure that your hand wash stations are set up prior to any food service. As soon as you get your booth set up, your tents up, everything's good, please make sure the hand wash station is set up and in use before you start handling any food or um, food equipment. Um, preparation. Um, food preparation is allowed to happen on site, but if you're going to do anything in advance, you just need to make sure you're listing on the application where you're doing that. Um, you don't allow cooling at special events. So want to make sure that temperatures are monitored. So always have a thermometer with you. You guys are basically a mini restaurant when you're operating out there. It's, you're under the same rules as a restaurant would be outside. So, um, making sure to take extra care, you know, no bare hand contact while during your um, As far as equipment goes, um, just making sure all equipment is functional and is smooth and easy to clean. Um, we always want to see commercial equipment. We don't want to style equipment out operating. Commercial equipment's more durable. It's easier to clean. Um, so for the, like, no coolers, would that mean that we would be able to use like catering cold boxes or would we need to use refrigerators? Mechanical refrigeration. 
we be looking for? Catering <clears throat> boxes are, they're not actually, I know we have catering hot boxes. It's insulated, you're saying. But if you have like an igloo, it's more considered. Is it like a cambro, like the plastic cambros that you don't plug in? It's just a plastic insulated box? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we want to be plugged in mechanical equipment, mechanical hot or cold. Even for the cold. Even for the cold. Yeah. But think about when it's, you know, 100 degrees outside at an event or something like that. <laughs> you know, closing that. You want to make sure it's plugged in, that it will stay cold. For the itinerary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know, when you're starting a business, you don't have the capital thing. I mean, even now, because of the cost of living and increasing in prices, mm -hmm. to get all that is very challenging. So if the person has, we already have these equipment, and I know you're changing, we already have a very long consideration until you are able to, to, to buy that because they are not cheap. I didn't know that because there was one in Costco. I didn't know that we had to have the plug in coal as well. You know, I use ice for tamales. It is okay. So I don't even really so they're issue. not cheap, I agree with you, but this the itinerant permit, you really truly are operating at eight different special events through the year. You're going to save a lot of money yeah. on the permit alone. Yeah. Um, some of those things cost to doing business. And what we want with the itinerant permit is to have a step up on the equipment, to allow us to inspect you less frequently, oh. which is why the permit act actually comes out to be cheaper than if you were to buy a permit for eight special events. So I hear what you're saying, but yeah, yeah it's and we could still operate as regular yeah. under the past permit. Yeah. Oh, definitely, yes. This is just another option for people, okay. people we see a lot, people yeah. that operate at multiple events. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm one of them. You're one of them. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like that in between. Think of it as like, you know, um, the temporary food permits have um, the standards are much lower compared to like a brick and mortar restaurant, like the hand washing sink's a great example. Um, or brick and mortar restaurant has to have a plumbed hand sink, hot and cold water. Mm -hmm. You guys temporary allowed to use the ready flow. But we're also inspecting almost every time you're out there. And so the same with the hot and cold holding, we're there much more frequently. And if we're going to allow you to operate without us being there as often, then you have to kind of come up to that level. So it's still not here, but it's just a little bit in between. So you were talking about this. How much is the special event payment? Is it one eighty-seven? Um, right now for a low risk one seven, which is most of the time what you end up getting, it's one eighty-seven. One seven days. Um, why is it so high? Why is the permit cost so high? Because most of the events that we do. A lot of them charge between one fifty to about three hundred dollars a day. So if you charge one eighty seven in addition to the three hundred or two hundred and something fees that we pay, sometimes we don't even get the book fee in certain events, depending on the foot traffic and depending on the event. So I don't know if consideration could be given. I don't want to compare you to other counties, but like if I'm going to do an event in Carson City. It's for a two day, it's like 50 50. Then you are paying 100. So it's much, it's much considerate and then helps the business owner. So I hear what you're saying. Our, um, this workshop is not a fee workshop. There's a whole workshop okay. in November. Okay. Um, there was November, and we had two public hearings, uh, Board of Health hearings in December and January. Okay. These. So the opportunity to have made these comments was we'll during that, that time. Um, and if you guys still have concerns or anything with the fees, um, that is something that, you know, this was a Board of Health direction for us. So we have to go with the fees that they approved in January. We don't have the ability to change that. Um, but so always the right to go to, yeah, to your... So are there other meetings in connection with that down the line that can address that? Yeah. And you can always interact with your board members. You can always contact them or send something or speaking public comment. The fee meetings where we actually were soliciting that have already happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's our that was that was already happened and then yeah, yeah. that was one way. So who is a board? Do we have it like in your the area that you live? 
you're the board member you are contacting. It's the link I emailed. Um, if you go online and Google Osho County District Board of Health, yes. it'll pop right up and um, contact information for the board members. You can see a meeting schedule. Thank you. This is our last slide, and then we'll open up for more questions. And if you are on Zoom, please feel free to type your questions in the chat. But we just wanted to quickly touch on our inspections going both ways, um, what we expect from you and what you can expect from us. Um, so you're always going to have an inspector walk up and greet you. Um, and we should have either an ID badge on like this one, or they'll hand you a business card so that you can tell um, who we are. Um, we're going to inspect all the, the high-risk areas of your setup. So obviously the first thing the inspector always does is we walk over and we wash our hands. We're trying to model that behavior for you and um, you how important it is for the booth to wash your hands. Um, we're going to check your food storage, make, their, make sure everything's up off the ground, um, temperatures, that sort of thing. Make sure everything's free from contamination or the potential contamination. Um, and then if we do find violations, we'll ask you to correct them on site. If it's something that's going to be um, causing you to not be able to perform your duties in a safe way or to do safe food and sort of safe food, um, we can suspend your permit. But of course, that's a last resort. We try to avoid that. Um, we expect from um, our inspecting to be respectful um, and to be honest with us. We're not there. It's not a gotcha. It's a, we're here to help you. We have a common goal. We want to serve a product and we know that that's what you guys want to. So it's really meant to be viewed as a partnership. Um, so just be honest with us. Um, and then you can come up with ideas together to violations. And stuff happens all the time and it might be something I've seen before. So we will come up with a solution. And if it's something, like I said, if we can't, it would be a permit suspension. We just cease operations until such time it could be corrected. Um, and then the valid health permit. Um, so like I said, that'll be emailed to you guys going forward. Um, and for operators that are found to be at an event serving food or drink that need a permit and don't have one, um, they are issued a secret order. Of course, we always want to avoid that situation as well, but just, you know, um, we want to keep things fair. If you guys do things the right way, you guys paid the money, you got your permit, you're getting an inspection, you're going out of your way to do things the proper way. Um, we want to make sure that people aren't guys have any questions or anything we didn't cover anything we didn't cover please feel free like i said put it in the chat or okay i hope this one is not like it's so normally we pay for the 14 14 weeks towards the end of the year what is there a possibility or consideration for you guys to roll it over to the next year, or is just a no? So per um, regulation, we cannot roll. It. Oh. Yeah, it's that's actually a state law, and it's in our local mix. It has to be calendar year. And then, um, for this permit, um, it says that we're still limited to fourteen days per farmers market, so. Does that mean you just have to keep getting the permit every 14 weeks or you can just only do it 14? The way um, technically like a spring, a summer, or okay. in a fall farmer's market. So there's actually never any time when there aren't enough time super. Okay. Would be considered like one of the eight events. I turn around. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And then the other question I have is like with food um, trucks, they pay a fee. So when they are going to their various stops, do you inspect them at those various stops? Do you know about each of the stops that they stop at during the year? 
So when they apply for their health permit, they have to provide us with an itinerary of where they're going to operate. Um, and we do catch them operating, try to find them while they're in the field and actually working. Mm -hmm. um, we don't see them every time they're operating. Mm -hmm. but their permit has higher requirements on it on them than a temporary food establishment does. And that same concept, it's like a restaurant, it has a higher standard, so they yeah. don't have to be inspected as often. Okay. So you take it. I don't want to. Do, uh, I want to promote myself besides the Riverside Farmers Market, and I have a location. Are you considering the same well, as a full TV? Well, there are times I want to do certain events, and I came and paid for the annual mm -hmm. sampling to allow me to also do the schools as well. But I take it. I want to do my food at a particular location where people can come and then really be treated as the. 14 days, single event for that particular location, and it will be considered as a special event for me. Is it part of a special event? Um, no, I'm trying to see if I can get a location to promote my cuisine. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to start doing the, the hot food yeah. this like Sunday. Pop yeah, yeah, like a pop-up. You have perhaps. to be part of an event to get any type of permit from us. Like a special events permit has to be part of a special event. You couldn't just somewhere <laughs> if it's an event then it could count as one of your eight events itinerant unless you get like a portable push cart permit that allows you to move around a what a push cart you know so very similar you're talking about mobile trucks there's the mobile trucks that are the actual trucks but then we also have either push carts or trailers that get pulled that it's a portable unit permit still have to operate inside whatever city, you know, if the city has limitations on where and, and it can't be that's something to talk to the and just go to my church parking lot and sell. You have to check what from our standpoint, as long as we've given you that annual permit, if you had an actual portable unit where everything's self-contained on the unit, um think about like a push like hot dog style cart. Mm -hmm. If you have one of those, then okay. yes, you wouldn't have to do, you wouldn't have to be you could operate as part of like a food truck you just stop wherever you want um as long as you're following whatever city rules there are they have certain regulations on where you can and can't sell like a certain distance from school um things like that but i can't just sell from my dodge from for my van no. <laughs> no no that's what oh, i, I oh, okay no 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 you can't yeah because i have the walking station i have everything because then that's a pop up, and that's not so your stand like what your setup is is a temporary food which has to be associated with the events. Yeah. We did get a Zoom question as the internet connection was not good, and we're really sorry. But thank you for doing something in the um, questions for us. He says, if the menu vary, i.e. one event is doing Indian tacos and another is doing hamburgers, would I be unable to apply for the annual permit? Um, as long as you list everything that you could possibly, could possibly be serving on your initial application and your servicing area can support all of that, if you decide to do an event and you're not going to do hamburgers at the point, you're just going to do tacos, that's fine. You just need to know everything you'd be offering um, when you initially apply. And the second question is, if we have hot water and a three compartment sink on site and do not store food off site, are we allowed to apply for the annual? So you still need the servicing area. Your any anybody for the itinerant permit is going to need that servicing area. Okay, so when I came to apply, I hadn't put some particular mail on my list. So if I have to do it, I just only have to email you to let you know in advance that I'm preparing that mail, right? Um, for your one that you did for Riverside where you added the hot food one? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> if you're not going to do it at every event, yeah, I needed to know when you were doing it so we could yeah. look at it, yeah. Okay. Because there's some mail that they want me to prepare that I hadn't put it on the page. I don't do this week, but for the coming week, just email you. And that even the customers want me to sell it to them. Yeah, and it's something hot. Yeah, it's something yeah. hot. It took a hot bowl. When you come on Sunday, you see, I went past, so it took a hot bowl. Well, the, the thing with that too is when you're 
getting your permit initially, the front desk is going to charge you the fee for a low risk or a high risk. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm high, end up paying for the high risk. With yeah. some of them, you're only doing a low risk. With, well, but yeah, we put a high risk. Okay, okay, as long as you're letting us know well in advance, mm -hmm. the menu is going to change. Ideally, we would want to know up front, but yeah, yeah, if you can give us right. advance notice. Yeah. Another Zoom. What if we are not located in Washoe County? Um, I think he means area. Um, we are going to require the servicing area has to be in Washoe County because we have to be able to inspect it. Um, and then lastly, we did have a sign-in sheet for the people here in person. If the people on Zoom can just put your name, organization, and then some contact information into the chat, that would be great. And if anyone thinks of more questions, um... And NPH special events page. My name is my contact info is on there, or you can email the front desk, and their contact information is on the screen. It's online. Okay. You can come into our office and submit it online. Yeah. Then. I don't want to be unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, bought there may well, that they well, want well, to yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a slow rollout, but there may be a point where we say you have to go online. So just, mm -hmm. you might want to just here and there. <laughs> I'll renew mine online. Okay, so Steve has a question. If we are expected to be as a local restaurant and are set up as such, why can we not apply for an annual permit? You need the servicing area for the storage of your equipment, um, any advanced food prep that you're doing, any dishwashing. And I know Steve does have a three compartment sink in his, but it's a requirement for the annual itinerant. It'll be the same for everybody. Because we don't do any advanced food prep. We prep at the event. I need it. It's the same thing we would require from our mobiles. Um, they still have to have the servicing area, even if they can wash dishes on their that would be where you get your clean water, where you would dump your gray water, where you do your dishes, you know, anything that you didn't wash in your three compartment sink, where you'd store everything. Uh, it's part of the requirement for the content, right? So it's Yes, you can. I'll talk to you later, Steve. Do you need my contact info?
<clears throat> Another question. If I want to sell a salad, I'm open with any of us. For example, it, it's hard to many people if you get it turns into a different color when it's too cold. I do I handle that. Have ice to use the to use a regular. You're worried about the refrigerator. Ice. I think you're saying ice. Yeah. We we send a we have to send well the refrig the freezer is different from the so the freezer aspect I'm okay but like I'm doing a salad I don't want it in my and I and I can't carry all that to the living location, so I will need like a, an ice something. And just put a salad there, that permissible because there's no other way besides like the itinerary or just for a regular, regular purpose. So my my permit to do the high risk food. The one you have now? Yes. Oh, okay. Are you asking if you can use ice? Yeah. Yeah. Just the itinerary, if you're interested in that new type. Mm -hmm. Itinerary one, the one that allows you to operate um, at those black events this year and then eight after that. I don't know if um, you guys would be more familiar with the food. We would, I think, yeah. yeah. You just have to, you have to determine if you do enough events for it to be worth it to get that type of permit and if you want to invest in the upgraded equipment. Besides the riverside on in the winter, we don't we need to be in the middle in the future. So that's what I'm trying to look at. But you're still wanting to do a pop-up style. Yeah, a pop-up style because I don't know you have to test it first to see where there's foot traffic and then to agree to the foods need to be So that's why I want a pop-up to see who the locations work for a while, especially during the or you don't have to operate for 14 weeks for that to be considered one event yeah. like you just said earth day right so that would that's a one day <laughs> for one of your eight events you don't have to be going on at the time well you can do seven events during the summer yeah. and then just be at you know side during the winter, but where you can operate and how you can pull temporary food permit has not changed. It's always have to be associated with that. We don't <clears> permit <throat> anybody to pull a temporary food permit and just like operate in a location where they want to operate it always. Yeah, but like the air they I paid the one it is seven that it was after that that I came in and paid for the <laughs> three hundred and something for the sampling permit to cover. So if I had paid the three hundred and something then I wouldn't have I have to pay the one eighty seven. Is that correct? So what would happen this year is a hard example because um the you know it all uh, gets into effect July one. Mm -hmm. So really, if you decide to pull this annual itinerant permit, it's it's for the second half of the year. But let's take next year for example, twenty twenty five. You know that you want to do Earth Day. You want to do Riverside Farmers Market, which is four events. You want to do maybe Shirley's Farm. Market or Tamarack from Market. Mm -hmm. Once you have eight events, you just do this one. Day. We come to your servicing area. We make sure you have all the equipment that you need, mm -hmm. and then you'll get just pay this fee one time for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And you can operate at as many events as you. Want. Oh, okay. you know, granted that you're with us and operating within, oh, you always do. <laughs> yeah, you always do a great job. Um, you're paying this one fee at the beginning of the year and you can operate at as many events as you want and you're getting to <laughs> if everything goes well, you're getting just four of the year. So, yes. So you can still get this for July one, but it is still the same fee and it's just for the rest of the year, which depending on how many events you're gonna do, you still can save a lot of money. Um, but it is it'll help people a lot more. 
next year when you get the calendar year with and it will be the same price next Shelly's and I can still operate the 14 on yeah. So you can operate up to 14 days off of be yeah, for me. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's my I can't get a break up. You in mind. <laughs> yeah. Difference what you're doing now, the sampling, not only permits you to offer a sample size portion of food for this one. You can do your regular setup, you could be cooking food on site, whatever. It this will cover you. The itinerant will cover you to do a perfect. We have come in to apply to be better if you don't for shells. So I'm confused about the days you're saying July. What does that mean? Shelly begins June 1st, and then um, what the other events all begin June September, October. Can't apply for this one until July first. Anything that's before that is so. Now you are making it hard for me. I'm not making it hard <laughs> for you. That's when the Board of Health says it's a new fiscal year, and that's when the permit is available. That we're operating. Yeah, we're not trying to make it school year, which is July first, and the events are based on yeah. calendar years. Yeah. So it is. Yeah, like we we have no way to offer this yeah. until July one. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I'll just go with the model from starting the year. But you see, I would have benefited. It's tricky. It's so here it is tricky, and we will. It's just a month. I don't know why they can't adjust it. The events we did adjust it because we're going to let people get the itinerant with five events listed instead of eight, yeah, because it's only half a year. Yeah. So that's our way of adjusting it, but the price can't change, there's nothing we can do with that. The date eight. can't change, eight. yeah. Eight. yeah. Eight. I mean, you might want to wait till next yeah. year, honestly, because yeah. you got your sampling yeah. already, yeah. And I'm yet to sit down and do the like comparison and figure out if it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it if you were to agree with me first. But it's worth it if I have to, well, I have to do it before you allow me to operate um, June first because I have to come a week before to apply. So if it were that the year's upcoming, you won't have to make that decision. It will just be a full year. So no consideration. I think I'm the I'm the only one in that kind of situation. Most people I won't be the only one yeah. in that situation. But we don't have like yeah. it's not our decision. We don't have the ability to do. This county, if this yeah. the counties, the counties. So you are representing the county. Can't you send our concerns to them then? <laughs> because you are here on behalf of the county, and then these are some of our concerns because the events begin a month before the physical year. And we're not so the opportunity because we don't we don't want to speak on your behalf. That is something that needs to be directly when you have those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And um, like I mentioned, that one for the fees did happen. Yeah. And that's when those kind of things happen. Yeah, we can't speak on your behalf because um, we try to take these into account when we suggest, like, can we do this type of permit for that reason? Because we are trying to figure out ways to help. Um, but it, when it comes down to what fee is set and when they go into effect, those are things that we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Another minute and see if anything moves. Otherwise, we can just. Unless you guys have anything else. Something on the side. Okay, now you just let me Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do Carson because it's seven hundred dollars for the whole season. To do other events. I have a problem. What can I have for you? You guys have had a practice over the ten years of you. You come to an event. 
with somebody who is selling big who's not on your plate. You never even accept that person. And then you just concentrate on we do. <laughs> There's an explanation. Um, a lot of times those baked goods are cottage foods, so they don't get inspected every time we're out. No. No. Do they have open food? Do they have packaged? But we can tell you that because you know, once you are in, you come and you are inspecting, you can equally interact with the people, but you don't. And I've I've been with you guys for 10 years and it's been like that. We've been playing to each other, but we don't want to. We need to know because we can't fix it if we don't know what. Yeah, no, but you are there. You cannot be at an event and see. Baby. There's you always ask if it's even cottage, even if the person is not. There's a lot of explanations that. that could be what you're yeah. explaining. Yeah. So people apply at different times. Everybody gets a set number of inspections. Your inspection date might not land the same date as somebody else. No, no, I'm not worried about that. So just so you know, for the farmer's market and any special event, yeah. you're required to send us a list of anybody serving food or drink. Yeah. And we go through and we vet that list on every single event for Washoe County of what food and drink is going to be there to make sure that either they have a permit, get a permit, or it's a cottage food. Yeah, so, I'm not worried about and that. if there is one that's there that shouldn't be, let us know. I don't know yeah. which one. I think if we knew what you're talking about, we could. No, 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 I don't want to because the point is, it's your practice for the 10 years I've been with you. You don't even go to the people who are not on your list. I do cottage as well. But because of that, I've I stopped by and checked your labels yes. and what you're offering. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If like if somebody has a special need and I don't want to do it in the kitchen, then I have to do like celiac. I have to be more uh -huh. careful. Then I can do cottage to cover all that. But I'm just saying that even if the person is not on the list, I don't know if you guys can take the extra responsibility to just ask. We do. If they're not on the list, we address it. Yeah. Everybody should be on the list. We should, you yeah. know. And, and like I said, I addressed it earlier. Once in a while, we'll find a situation where somebody showed up that we didn't know was going to be there, and maybe they don't have a permit, and they got to go. Yeah. But if you see something weird or you're no, questioning, you can want, let us know. Like, how do you call it? That rat. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you know, it's not fair to you guys if other people are doing things. Because the other thing to think about is, especially if it's not a safe practice, we don't have the ability to address it. The last thing any of us want or any kind of business is associated with your events. So, um, <laughs> It is like in everyone's best interest to make sure that kind of thing isn't happening. We take anonymous complaints. Yeah, you can submit it yeah. anonymously. So yeah. for foods, you can take it anonymous. Nobody would know, but um, yeah, I think it's in everyone's best interest that if there's something happening that we're not seeing, and a lot of it may be that it happens after we've been there, or yeah. you know that always happens. We're only there for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but anyone that's on the list, then... They have done that, and maybe you didn't see it. That doesn't mean they didn't do. It. Come around with where we, you know, we we know who's supposed to be there, and even people that are supposed to, you know, be doing shelf stable prepackaged that don't need a permit, and we buy their booth, buy the cottage booth, and everything is have items. <laughs> it might not happen every single time, and that might be what's weird is. You might not, every single staff member that goes out there might not stop at every single It's not yeah, my you know, inspected. Yeah. I know you inspect us at different, different times. Yeah. Of, you don't want to know about the 10-year period. They don't have to get to you every, yeah. every visit, so. And your number of inspections might be done. What's the one's number of inspections? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That doesn't ever work out either. You? Thanks for coming, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we tried. Thank you yeah. so much. Thanks for all the you're yeah. in the know. Now you're in the know. So thank you. Have a good day. You, you guys too. Thank, thank you so much. You. Okay. I'm so we had one more Zoom question, and just to answer your question, Steve, it will be eight events for next year to qualify. Mm -hmm. Any other questions?
Um, we're going to go ahead and end this Zoom meeting, but please reach out. I'll be expecting to hear from you, so please email me whatever questions you have. And then thank you for